What's going on there, guys? Good afternoon. It is the Earth Master here. Uh, barely. Got my voice at least a little bit. Uh, Going to do an update video here. A little bit of earthquake activity to discuss about uh, t taking place overnight. And this morning, uh, it is Christmas Eve 2021, about 11.55 a.m. California time. And the latest quake, a 3.0 earthquake into the northern California region, right around the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, where we're still seeing continued deep earthquake activity ramp up in that Mendocino triple point junction area. Let's go ahead and check out what's going on around the rest of the world here on the USGS map where we had a, uh, a two point or a 4.9 earthquake strike around the Loihi Seamount. Let's go ahead and head out there to the Pacific and look at that earthquake. Uh, we have seen a little bit of movement here over the last 30 days or so of uh, some microquakes and whatnot kicking off here in a swarm fashion around this um, some uh, underwater volcano, the Loihi Seamount, which sits uh, a little distance, about 20 miles, 25 miles or so off the coast of the Big Island. This 4.9 struck earlier this morning at about 11.9 kilometers below the surface. That's the blue circle there, the caldera region in the outline uh, of the uh, circle there. And uh, you can see 4.9 in the blue, but prior to that, we have seen a pretty good, considerable swarm of earthquake activity ramp up in that region over the last month. I was looking at some activity uh, historically in this region, and it looks as though they definitely do get some earthquake activity, including a 4.0 back in June of this year. And they had a uh, pretty good swarm of movement uh, back in 1996, July, August, 1996, which included more than 4,000 earthquakes uh, with near, nearly 300 events larger than M3.0 and 95 events between the M4.0 and 4.9 range. So uh, definitely some activity uh, has taken place historically. So 4.9 is no shock, but definitely uh, showing some signs of uh, increase, no doubt, over the last year or so of, uh, of this growing volcano. Uh, it does, uh, the peak itself is about uh, 3,280 feet below sea level. So it's way down there. And a lot of the activity can't be monitored, according to these folks here at the uh, USGS. There are no working monitoring instruments on the Lohi Seamount volcano. Um, so all real time information is derived from the land based seismic stations, of course, on land, which would be up over here. I've tried to access the most uh, closest station to that region, and it is up on the live stream here. Uh, a, uh, it's actually got an earthquake coming into it right now. There's Japan, but uh, coming up here, not this graph, this is Chile, but we got another earthquake coming into the, uh, it looks like the Kina Point area. That's going to be this station right here. Got an earthquake coming in. This station located on the southeast flank of the Big Island. Uh, kind of close to the Loihi Seamount, about as close as we can get, but that's the station coming in uh, with an earthquake right now as we speak there on the big island. Uh, looking at the rest of the map here, let's go ahead and go back to the uh, all magnitudes here. And Of course, that earthquake hasn't showed up yet, just coming into the live seismographs. We'll check that out here in a little bit. Activity remains excessively quiet. Excessively, I don't know if that's the word, but extremely quiet over here, Japan northward and southward, with only minimal earthquake activity throughout the Solomon Islands and down into the Fiji region. We did see some further movement uh, north of Gisborne, New Zealand, around the Kermadec Trench. Hopefully this voice will let me uh, continue this update. Good Lord, I have to have Missy Mimi's jump in here and uh, cover for me. A 5.7 earthquake striking around the Laos area. This comes after some further movement over the last week where they've seen a 5.5 further down south into the country. But today a 5.7 5 and also a 4.6 aftershock uh, kicking up in the northern part of that country. Uh, looking at the rest of the area, we have seen a little bit of migration of movement and pressure gradients here in this region here. You can kind of draw, an, if you were to draw an arrow across this, uh, across this chart here, a lot of pressure builds up here in this region kind of moves down when we don't see a lot of activity up here 
All we see further movement kind of pointing in this general this general fashion here and, and kind of in that time frame as well. Kind of bounces around here, works its way up to the uh, northwest and eventually ends up over here towards the Atlantic uh, where we're seeing uh, a little bit of activity prior to the Atlantic here in the Mediterranean Sea, some movement around Italy and the uh, Greece area all getting in on some activity. This movement was from last night but uh, still some activity to uh, watch here in this region pretty closely. The Atlantic itself, north and south, and the South Sandwich Islands all remain very quiet. Uh, activity up in the Iceland area, nothing showing up here on the USGS map. South America remains somewhat quiet as well. A uh, little earthquake movement along the southern end of the uh, Peru Chile Trench and also up here towards the north with a couple fours kicking off here. The central part remains very quiet. Uh, Puerto Rico little activity but uh, that was from last night no further movement into that region of the area and uh, looks like the movement here in the states remains quiet as well got to watch the west coast though in the Hawaii area it seems as though when Hawaii is popping off is when we're seeing quite a bit of movement in the western part of the country here of the United States that goes hand in hand so kind of keeping an eye on the west coast for some potential further movement Overnight, we did see continued earthquake activity into the northern California region around the southern end of the Cascadia Megathrust, right? Deep movement. This is deep subduction zone earthquake activity. Some of it is shallowing up a little bit. We're getting some further movement up towards the uh, back over towards the area where the 6.2 struck and some shallow depth earthquakes uh, increasing in this area. But there's some further movement here stretching towards the Fortuna Rio Dale area just south of Eureka into the subduction zone. This is where the subduction zone uh, is underneath the North American plate. 23, there's one a little bit more shallower in a 23 kilometer depth here for some of that earthquake activity. So I don't think we're out of the woods here of potentially possibly seeing a larger quake within this region. There was no tremor activity uh, last night in the uh, in the trimmer department, zero epicenters of trimmer into the Cascadia. We'll see how that looks tonight. But uh, earthquake activity remains elevated, no doubt, along the uh, North American and uh, southern end of the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. We did have some further activity into the Gulf of California with a, uh, this is a 4.9, I believe, 4.9, yes, occurring uh, yesterday, late last night. And of course, activity ramping up here on the north part. We haven't seen a whole lot of movement between these two. Yes, we've seen some activity, uh, typical activity along the San Jacinto Fault area, but this is a major plate boundary here, the San Andreas Fault. And of course, the southern end is supposedly locked and loaded and uh, uh, has been ready to go for quite some time. I remember hearing about it as a kid. Uh, my parents always tell me about California sliding off into the ocean. That's not possible. It's not really a subduction zone area. Maybe up here, if we had a super massive quake and a, and a release of pressure along the San Andreas Fault too, who knows? I highly doubt it. But uh, there's a lot of fear mongering back in, in my days growing up about my parents uh, saying the big one's overdue. Of course, we've, we've never had the big one yet. So each day that goes by, this segment here of the southern section of the San Andreas Fault uh, places a large populated area into a major... Uh, scenario in the future no doubt could be today could be tomorrow who knows but uh, it's definitely getting closer i can feel it with all the activity up here in the north and the south something's got to be taking place here on the major plate boundary here man i'm gonna have to call it i'm getting uh my voice is getting down there just took a hot shower and uh tried to get some of this stuff out here but it's just kicking hardcore uh san andreas fall pretty quiet like i mentioned some movement off on the San Jacinto Fault area and a little bit of activity off the coast of Los Angeles with a 2.7 near Santa Cruz Island. We did have some movement up here in the north part of Nevada around Pyramid Lake again, 3.5, larger magnitude than what we've seen here over the past week. Go to the all magnitudes here and we can see a little swarm of microquakes kicking up here right around that 3.5 region of Pyramid Lake. Uh, eastern crest of the Sierra Nevada remains awfully quiet and movement throughout the Intermountain West regions and up into Montana and Wyoming all remain 
definitely quiet over the last 24 hours. So a couple hot spots here, folks. We'll keep an eye on it. Alaska calming down at the moment. We will be back a little bit later, hopefully, with an update video as it's very dependent on my voice. If not, uh, Missy Mimi's will hopefully step in and cover for me. Uh, I'm going to try and uh, get, get a little bit better because <laughs> this is definitely not my typical voice here for the uh, the stream. Seems like it's getting worse. All right, guys, have a good day. We will chat at you later, hopefully. Peace out.